you would already know that a vector quantity is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Let's look at vectors in more details and think about how we can add vectors together. But depending on whether these vectors are collinear vectors or coplanar vectors, we need to add them differently. So let's look at what makes a group of vectors collinear and what makes them coplanar. To make things look a little bit more three-dimensional, I'm going to draw a plane. And on this plane, I'm going to draw a black arrow. I'm also going to draw three more arrows in red. All three of these vectors represented by these red arrows are considered collinear because they're parallel to the same line. And on this other plane that I've drawn, you can see that these arrows are no longer collinear because they're not parallel to the same line. They're only parallel to the same plane. So when vectors are parallel to the same line, they're considered collinear. And if they're parallel to the same plane only, they're considered coplanar. And you can also see that, by default, all collinear vectors are also coplanar. Adding vectors that are collinear is relatively simple. You would have met that already in GCSE Physics. So for example, if we have a car uh, being pushed in one direction with a force of 10,000 newtons, and the friction acting on the wheels is 3,000 newtons, then the resultant force is simply 10,000 minus 3,000, and you get 7,000 newtons as a resultant force. And this is for forces that are collinear. But when you have coplanar forces that are not collinear, it complicates things a little bit. So here's a coplanar situation where you have a car being pushed uphill and you have weights acting downwards towards the center of the earth. You have the push, you have the friction, you have the normal reaction force between the wheels and the slope. You have all of these forces acting on it. So even if you don't have forces that are acting parallel to each other, you still need to know how to add them together. I'm going to show you how you can add coplanar vectors together. Here we have an object and there are two forces acting on it. One is horizontal, 4 newtons, and the other one is vertical, and that's 3 newtons. We're going to use the method known as the head-to-tail method. I'm going to draw the 3 newtons force first. Take the end of the 4 newton arrow and attach it to the head of the 3 newton arrow. Then I'm going to complete this triangle with a dotted line and the dotted line is my resultant force of these two forces. Then I'm going to simply use Pythagoras. So Pythagoras theorem says that z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So I'm just going to square root all of those to get z. And that's square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. And that gives me 5 newtons. 5 newtons is the resultant force. But I can't just stop there because a vector also has a direction. So I'm going to use trigonometry to figure out the angle theta. And theta is representing the direction of my resultant force. So tan theta is equal to the opposites divided by the adjacent. And in this case, that is... 4 divided by 3. That gives me an angle of 53.1 degrees. That is the direction of my resultant force. Let's look at an example where we have to figure out the resultant force of coplanar forces. A rower is trying to get from one side of the river to the other side of the river by rowing his boat. But there's a water current flowing down the river at 2 meters per second. The rower tries his best to row directly across the river vertically at 1 meter per second. But since there are two different velocities trying to pull the boat in different directions, the water trying to pull it to the right, the rower trying to row forward, the boat will actually travel diagonally. You want to figure out the boat's resultant velocity. And again, we use the head-to-tail method. I redraw this diagram again, starting with the vertical arrow, uh, and that's 1 meter per second. And my horizontal arrow is 2 meter per second. The dotted line is showing the resultant velocity. And angle theta is the uh, direction of this new velocity. To find a magnitude, again, I use Pythagoras. 
and that is just uh, 2 squared plus 1 squared, and then all of this square roots. Square roots of 2 squared plus 1 squared, and that gives me 2.24 meters per second. And to find the direction, I do 10 theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent, and here it's 2 divided by 1. That gives me an angle of 63.4 degrees. In other words, the boat is going to travel at 2.24 meters per second at an angle of 63.4 degrees from the north if I take the vertical direction as the north. Just to conclude, if you need to add coplanar vectors, you need to think about the vertical and horizontal components and then use Pythagoras theorem to find a magnitude and afterwards use trigonometry to find the angle of the vector. Thank you for watching my tutorial.